Today's Colorado trivia is who was the very famous Denver Post editor and owner? The answer? Frederick G. Bonfies. He purchased the post with another gentleman that he actually met at the Windsor Hotel in Denver. Well, it looks pretty good for being 125 years old. The Denver Post has had its ups and downs since its first edition in 1892. We have more information about the Denver Post, some exciting stuff, but it continued to report on the actions of 23 presidents, countless victories and tragedies around the globe. And the Denver Post hits the streets even before the very first cars drove up and down Broadway. Of course, who better to chat about this newspaper right here, the Denver Post, than our very own history expert, Dr. Colorado, who was once a Sunday Post columnist. Good to see you, my friend. Great to be here, Denise. So we were just talking about, in, in the Colorado trivia, uh, Fred Bonfies. How did he make the Denver Post so popular back in the 1800s? Well, he turned it into a carnival, a circus. Red, big red ink, screaming headlines, lots of great photographs, and issues and questions like, does it hurt to be born? Oh, only wow. The, only the Denver Post could tell you if it hurts <laughs> to be born. So he knew how to get attention then. <laughs> right. Who was his partner? Uh, Harry Tammon, who he met, as you said, at the Windsor Hotel Bar. And Harry Tammon was a bartender who would, every dollar he took in, every silver dollar, he'd flip it up to the ceiling. And if it was stuck on the ceiling, it belonged to management. Oh, my God. Otherwise, Harry took it home. Uh, yeah, I would imagine he took <laughs> yeah. a lot of those home. Yeah. In, in the Denver newspaper wars, who was the Post fighting? The Rocky Mountain News, you know, the oldest yes. paper of all, April 23rd, 1859. And it led the circulation up until around 1900 when the Post passed it. Now, look at that great picture right there. So what was the other name for the Denver Post longtime home on Champa Street downtown? It was also called the Bucket of Blood. The Bucket of, of Blood? Of the red bloody headlines, and also some people very upset with Bonifaz and Tamman came in, uh, Mr. Anderson, an attorney, and shot them both. Oh. Didn't kill them, but hit them both. Gosh, so what a crazy time. <laughs> I bet they got some great headlines out of that story. Right. <laughs> you mentioned Herndon Davis before. Haven't you? Right. Did a book on Herndon Davis, yeah. most famous for the face on the barroom floor, but he also did paintings for the Post, including that great photograph we saw a minute ago. But here she is, the face on the barroom floor in Central City at the Teller House. He just got bored one night and just started painting? How did that? Right. And it's, it's, they finally figured out it was actually his wife, but she was embarrassed about it, so she denied it was her and threw people off track. And a lot of other people. Wow, I mean, claimed that's, they were the inspiration. Oh, really? That's a beautiful painting. Very, very talented. And now let's go back to to what you said earlier. A lot of Coloradans called the Post a circus. Why? Right. Well, they were constantly coming up with new stints. They had Houdini climbing the outside of the building. They had this little elephant going around. <laughs> I don't know if it's promoting the post or eating the post there, is it? <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> was holding it up, saying, hey. They had a big scoreboard. They were the first to have this electronic announcement of the World Series and major news events. <laughs> there was always something going on at the post. I've always heard of like newspaper boys or girls, never a newspaper elephant delivery. It's <laughs> <That's> very <laughs> funny, only the post. You were a contributing columnist at the Denver Post. Yeah, that was fun for about 20 years. I did for the old Empire magazine, which a lot of us miss, and then for the Sunday Post up until recently. Now, you worked alongside a lot of great characters, a lot of wonderful people. Can you share a story with us about maybe you contributed mm -hmm. in, in the post? Oh, yeah. I think Gene Amel was one of my favorites at the Rocky Mountain News. You could always, in those days, you could walk into the newsroom and chat with people and talk to people, much oh. less formal than it is today yeah. with the armed guards. How is the Denver Post firing today? They're mostly going okay. online, you know. They see the future as an electronic edition. But it'll be a sad day when we don't have a local uh, hard print newspaper for some of us that That's can't drink so our true. coffee in the morning without a paper. Well, and, there, and you're right. There's something about when you're holding a paper and you're actually, you know, the smell, the feel, the, just the, the whole tradition, right? Right. So what kinds of things do you still like to read from the Denver Post? Well, I enjoy their editorials, their thoughts on things, their feature stories. Although it's diminishing, it's sad to see the post shrinking as so many newspapers are today. Mm hmm. Back in the saddle. See me in, in for lunch. That's the headline. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Colorado. It's always great catching up with you. You're the best. I didn't even know you were a columnist all these years for the Post. My gosh. You can pick up the Denver Post and see what today has to offer.
history, of course. For more from Dr. Colorado, including all of his talks, his tours, his books, and classes, please check out his website. Go to dr-colorado.com.